You got to accentuate the positive, eliminate the negative, latch on to the affirmative. Don't mess with Mr. In Between. You got to spread joy up to the maximum, bring gloom down to the minimum, and have faith or pandemonium's liable to walk up on the scene. To illustrate my last remark, Jonah in the whale, Noah in the ark. What did they do just when everything looked so dark? Positive, eliminate the negative and latch on to the affirmative and don't mess with Mr. In Between. No, don't mess with Mr. In Between. drinks yet but we will be with you in just a minute um we're back for part two with uh dirk blocker on our happy hour segment um if this is your first time tuning in we created these because we're at home we're in quarantine still for not only our own health but the health of everyone around us and um so we created this just as a as a distraction for everything that's going on in the world, something happy and real. So um, it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fun to it's fun. have real conversations with other people who are, well, we're all going through the same thing together. We're all handling it a little differently. But mm-hmm. anyway, um, it's a good show. So you wanna, you wanna tell us it's a little a fun, bit about part two? Fun show, yeah. Um, well, part two, Dirk's wife came in from the other room 
they're at home like we are. And um, she brought with her some, some new ideas and we wound up speaking about recipes and travel. And um, she, by the way, is an actress too and has, has been um, in Hollywood for years. Yeah. Like he did. Um, really cool history. And uh, it was really nice to talk to him too about his upbringing because he is uh, the son of um, a Bonanza hero, Hoss. Um, Dan Blocker. Dan, Dan Blocker. And he said his dad started him very young, like three or four, taking him to the studio with him when they had a shoot. And he just watched all the actors and he said it was like going to school yeah. for years. And he, he grew up with it, so he's following right on in the footsteps of his family. Yeah, And, and it was fun to listen to and, and all the things that he did getting here where he is. And I got some good recipes out of the teal, too. In fact, tonight, folks, um, we're going to include a couple of those recipes in the description. And if you haven't watched part one, it mm -hmm. is on YouTube. It's free to watch these, of course. And not only do we want you to watch them, we want you to share them with other people. Um, and uh, as long as people are watching and the numbers continue to show that there's an interest, we'll keep making them. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, this one's a lot of fun. It's a Q&A, the part two. We just had so much to say in the first one, we had to break it up. So, um, but you get to, yeah, there's a couple of recipes that you're gonna get in this episode. Uh, you get to see Quigley's Tushy, and... Um, you just, Always an amazing sight. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's trying to get like master scale on his union card or something. Yeah, it's, uh, he's gonna have to get his SAG card when he yeah, he's, <clears throat> grows up a little bit. Yeah, so, she's Louise. He's, he's, uh, I think he hit the, the, the drinks a little too much at the beginning of this, but <laughs> that's okay. Whatever works. It's happy hour. If you guys have questions for future episodes, email us, bgfans. B-E-E-G-I-E -E -E fans at bgadair.com. Email us your questions. They may show up in a future happy hour. So, yeah. anyway, thanks all. And uh, now let's turn it over to Dirk, BG, me, and soon Danielle. Well, I, I've always figured, you know, if there's they're they're musicians, well, they have to have people to listen. You have to have an audience. So Absolutely, I'm, I'm we say great, that all the time. I'm a great audience. You are. I, I I do love I love music and I love hearing you guys play and you know my wife. That's great. I, if it's okay, I'd like my if she's still around, I'd like my wife to come in and say hello. If that's yes, right. of course. Love to see her. That's marvelous. And yeah, I'll come join the. Uh, Danielle. Hi. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Monica. Hi, Monica. Hi. How are you? It's such a an honor to meet you both. Oh, oh well. Well, it's an honor to meet you all. Oh, yeah. To, no, oh, seriously. I thinking, well, I was thinking about the first time we heard BG. Yeah, I mentioned that we, okay. we, that we you yeah. know, got her autograph and the whole. Oh, well, no, but the oh. first time that before we became, before we moved. Oh, oh yes, right. It had to be 10, 12 years ago. And it was Christmas, and we had Pandora on, Jazz mm -hmm. Oz. We have always, Dirk has turned me on to jazz over the years, and we are huge fans. Mm -hmm. And I think it was the Christmas Waltz, which is my favorite Christmas yeah. song. Mm -hmm. wow. We were going, God, who is this? Who is this? And I went, BG Daniel. BG there you yeah. go. <laughs> and, yeah. Well, when I and was we've whistle, got a lot of Christmas albums. Yeah, I get them mixed up sometimes. But that started our huge fandom for you. And we oh, went oh, to great. your station and then collecting your CDs. And then we got to see you in Beverly like, Hills. Yeah, Los Angeles, in yeah. Los Angeles. Well, next time we're in Beverly Hills, we'll we're have hanging. To you up again. Yeah. We're, we're hanging. We were supposed to be there this summer, of course, with. Before the pandemic right. came right. I know. roaring through, right, yeah. and uh, so everything <laughs> I, is. Uh, on we hold. have a couple of rituals, and you all should join us. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say where, but we always stay at a fantastic hotel that's full of history, and then we always eat and drink a lot <laughs> at. Um, uh, a restaurant that's been in 
lots of films and television shows down off of maybe Sunset Hollywood Boulevard. I don't know where it is. Move anyway. Yeah. <laughs> You're not supposed to say where. <laughs> Come yes. on. Yes. yes. That's yes. Well, that's, there we go. Mr. Frank, Frank, we love you. Well, in fact, we were supposed to be there a couple of weeks ago. And on the day of, I sent Roger a text. I'm like, we should be getting ready right now for Musa and Franks. And he's like, shit, you know, yeah. <laughs> I'm immediately depressed, uh, but that's okay. We'll be back. And yeah. you'll go with us next time. We, we will meet you there with bells on. We love it. <laughs> with an, with a, a ride share car. That's about the only time I use uh, uh, that I drink martinis. And when they bring you martinis, they bring you yeah. martinis. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Know? And you definitely need a ride chair, yeah. yeah. But you oh, know, yeah. the service is, um, okay, so you guys travel a lot, I'm sure, or will yes. and have traveled a lot. And and we have as well. And we've learned that um, some things cost money, but ultimately you are you get the experience. And whether it's New York or LA or Chicago or London, some of those experiences you can't replace. So you really you know, you love to spend a little bit more or whatever. And, and I guess ultimately it all is kind of the same in this day and age, but we go to New York, we have a restaurant we have to go to. It's our place. We go every time. Actually, we have a tradition before Carnegie that we go to this specific place and it's the waiters. There's two or three waiters that wait just on the sidelines, just waiting for us to move to uh, let them know that we need something. Half the time we don't really, but you know, we're animated and they rush over to the table to help us. And Musa and Franks, we had, we always have the same experience. It's like, what do you need? What can we do for you? Right. And for, they are in the heart of kind of the pit of a lot of things. And the fact that they can retain that sensibility and that sophistication when they're they're dealing with a lot of different types of people. Let's just yes. put it that way. Yes, and we're not necessarily the cream of the crop because when we leave there, we need help getting out. But, <laughs> <laughs> but still, I mean, it's, it depends on the martinis. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the deliver the delivery is perfect. We yeah. are always oh yeah, it's old so, school. Yeah, it's it old is school. exactly. It really is. Yeah, New York. Yeah. Really. Kind of. Mm -hmm. Are you guys able to get out a little bit, or have you? No, not really. Well, we no. haven't either. Yeah, so you're us either. Here, yeah. but you, you yeah. stand close to home. Yeah, we really are. We're we, taking it seriously. We have. We're responsible. We're Good. also responsible for other people besides ourselves. We're, sure. Yeah. Danielle, in particular, is taking care of her mother, who is by herself, and yeah. just, you know, we just can't take any chances. So. Yeah. No. But well, we appreciate that. We're lucky right. we've got our we've got each other, which is the best thing. And we've got a little we got a little modest little home, but it's got a little modest little backyard. But the birds come and visit us and the yes. squirrels the squirrels oh, come yeah. around and you know, we, we 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 we're okay. We're okay. We've got yeah. nothing to complain about. Yeah. We were just talking True. about that the other night, weren't we? We don't either. Yeah. It's right. just yeah. we're lucky. We're a little stir crazy, but at the end of the day, we're not Anne Frank. We're fine. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. 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 Huge to, to yeah. put it all in perspective and be grateful for what you have. And and you can see the uh, just I've been <clears throat> watching him at um, SNBC today, and <clears throat> Arizona and Texas are just rampant with new cases because yeah. people were getting out too much. Yes, exactly. exactly. Yeah. You yeah. know, and not not wearing masks and all that sort of thing. Yeah. So, I think, yeah. I think people really thought maybe that it wasn't so bad and, you know, yeah. but if uh, you, if you, you know, if you really listen to the scientists and read, yeah. read the literature, it's, yeah. it's a scary time. It's scary. It is. It's very scary. I think yeah. there's just a, the general idea of being kind to others. Yeah. And I think the sooner we all buckle down, the sooner everything can open up and yep. the sooner you can get back to work, both of you, and oh, we can get back to work and everyone can enjoy the things that they're missing That's or right. they're holding on to, you know. Yeah. Um, You're right. Kind, kindness is kind of everything to me. Yeah, I agree. Compassion. I agree. Yeah. So, Danielle, can you stick around? 
I sure. would love to. Yeah. Are, Dirk is it okay with you? We're going to throw her into the Q and A. Is that okay? Why? <laughs> why? Of course. Okay. <laughs> Good. Dirk, Danielle, mm. I have questions. Mm. This could be for either of you to answer. This could be these questions. Um, anyone can answer. They may be geared towards an individual. We'll see here. Um, Dirk, who was the funniest co-star you've ever worked with? Well, that's a, it's hard. It's so hard to pin it down to one person. I know. Does anybody just um, kind of come to mind? Well, I'd say John Larquette is one of the funniest people I've ever worked with. Mm. The guy who plays my partner on Brooklyn Nine-Nine, Joel McKinnon. Oh, you guys are perfect together. He, and you know, he is an excellent actor and he's also an opera singer, by the way. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah. That was that's how he started. I mean, that's what he was going to be. But you know, people said, "But you know, you're a good actor. You should maybe think about that too." At any rate, he makes me laugh really hard. Yeah. Um, everybody on the show, pretty much. Um, yeah. The Brooklyn Nine Nine. <laughs> and I'm sure there are, there are probably many others that I'm not thinking of right now, but those pop out of my head right off the top of my head. Yeah. I love it. That's, that's great. A, John Larroquette is perfect. He is. Okay, this is for anyone who wants to answer. Who's the best teacher you've ever worked with? Well, are we uh, does it matter what what they teach or You know that was not specified, so I say it's a free for all. This is happy hour, who cares? <laughs> I need a drink. You do. Uh, I do. You do need a drink. That's where you're going to Go ahead. Best teacher I've ever worked with is Harry Master George. Harry, really? and that yeah. goes for both of us. Harry's a, a, a director a, a and a coach, um, and he's he's meant a lot to both of us. He's yeah. he's really opened a lot of doors and windows and roofs and everything else. <laughs> still teaching, up. still sharp at age, really? at age ninety. Oh, wow, that's great! Yeah, yeah. great yeah. director, great. So, and, you good. don't lose certain things, right? Like it's there, it's not there. So right, right. that's great. Yeah, that's fantastic. BG, do you have a do you have a favorite team? Oh, look, there's Quigley. Everybody. Hey, 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 Quigley. Quigley has a little war wound. It's healing. Everybody just got a little view of his white spot on his yeah, yeah, yeah. Did he? Oh. He's fine. He got in a fight with his brother. Oh, oh Grover. Grover? Yeah, Grover. Yeah, he did. Um, We're pretty sure it's Quigley's fault, but anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's always quickly. It's quickly. I'm, I'm, you're you're oh, messing up it. my groove here, baby. Come on. You were there somewhere. My, what was the question? There you are. I love it. That's hilarious. On, He's going to show his back end in a minute. His back end is his favorite thing to we, show. So. We've been saying that these these guys are the producers. <laughs> yeah, producers. <laughs> producers. <laughs> producers. Yeah. What was the question? <laughs> Who is uh, your the best teacher you ever worked with? Oh, well, aside from the guys that I worked with when I first started, where they would just take me under their wing and show me stuff. Yeah, but a real I had a real artist teacher at Western, who was uh, a student of Ernst Donanyi, who was a student of Brahms. Oh. So I have a thread from Brahms. Wow! And uh, he he taught me. All kinds of stuff. I mean, he was major in my life. Wow. Joseph Running, he's, he's passed away, but um, he lived in Seattle at, uh, in a later life. He, he lost his wife and he remarried and moved to Seattle. <clears throat> and I used to play the Jazz Alley out there, and I would call him and he would come and see me play. He was very elderly at that time, he was like 90 something. And they would come and have dinner and, and watch my trio play oh. so that was that was a big deal for me oh yeah. sure of course <laughs> when you say western bg what what school what was that western uh, kentucky university western kentucky okay got it it was uh it was a uh, not a trade school but a, a state school when i went it was western kentucky yeah. college yeah and then by the time i got out of there it was uh, it had turned into a university we had 1,500 students when I went, and nowadays they have like 35, 40,000 students. Yeah. Wow. It's a huge wow. university now. It's a wow. great school. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Good and they, music they, department and everything. 
they've dished out a couple of um, very talented musicians. Yeah, Mike Longo graduated from there too. Ooh. Sam Bush, yeah. a graduate. Oh, from there. Sam Bush is a graduate. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's cool. Yeah, it's it's a terrific school. Great. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, <clears throat> I have another question. Um, now, here's the thing: you just tell me when to stop. When you're bored and you're like, "Enough with you," you just tell me. <laughs> Never. Um, this one's a little personal, but I don't think it's too personal. You don't have to answer. This is for anyone. What are your hobbies outside of work? Anyone? Well, I mean, I I, uh, I like writing and I like reading. And yeah. Otherwise, I'm kind of a dull guy. No, he's I'm, not. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, really, I. I uh, I, I'm pretty, pretty uh, laid back. You know, I don't, uh, you know, I don't, um, do I have any? <laughs> well, he's a voracious reader of all things. Reading so. is a hobby. Reading yes. is a serious hobby. Yes, it is. It, it's kind of like a lifestyle. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, I like hiking in the, you know, again, one, one back in the I'm, day. <laughs> I'm careful now to be sure I'm in a safe place to do it, but, uh, sure. Sure. But, uh, but otherwise, I, I love uh, I love just getting out and just taking off for the hills or the beach or wherever else I might go and yeah. unwinding and you know kind of breathing the air. But, but uh, also listening to music. Oh yeah. Dirk has music, turned yeah, me. Uh, I've always loved music, but we've been together for quite a long time, and he really turned me into a jazz fan. And Aww. what I love is when we're listening to things, something will pop on. He's like a walking encyclopedia. Seriously, and he'll go, oh, that's so and so, and I'll check it. Yeah, that is so and so. And yeah. Goes, if I had a nickel for every time he said, I wore that album out. Yeah. I wore that album out. Aww. Yeah. He is. He loves jazz, music in general, but jazz. Mm -hmm. Does it make you feel any better that we do the same thing? I mean, even with jazz musicians, it's like it's yeah. a little game. Who is that? Before we look, we're like. Yeah. Who is that? Yeah, you know, yeah. just to yeah. test your own skills a little bit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. I'm pretty good at singers. I'm not as good as the instrumentalist, but I'm, I mean, some I am, but singers, I can usually, jazz singers, I can. Yeah. I can imagine. But What's your favorite? Or one of your my, favorites? My favorite singers? Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> I grew up listening to Streisand. Mm -hmm. um, my mom introduced me to Streisand. So she was the, she was instrumental in me uh, being where I am today in a lot of ways. But now I listen to, um, Doris Day and Rosie Clooney and Peggy Lee. Um, I love Lena Horne. June Christie. Yeah. Uh, Chris Connor. Um, I, I, I'm kind of drawn to the singers. I, I'm drawn to the lyric of a tune. And I think a singer who can just sing the lyric and not, be, acro and not yeah. be acrobatic about it, not have to show all their resources in the one song Just I, I yeah I say I don't I don't have all the resources that I I'm not an Ella Fitzgerald for instance I know what I can do and um so I just try to capitalize on that a little bit but it's in part because that's what I love to do I just love the lyric of a song and if I don't yeah, believe the lyric too. or if it's not feeling if I'm not feeling it on any night I'll skip it I won't sing it because why right. you know right. Right. It's fraudulent. So, <laughs> right. but, um, but yeah, anyway, so yeah. that's who, who, who needs artifice? You don't yes. really. <laughs> yeah. this. It's, you know, it's, yeah. if you, I kind of look at my job is, is to entertain, you know, I'm not trying to change the world. I'm just trying to make people forget about the woes of the world for a couple oh, of yeah. hours. And yeah. 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 it's all about the lyric. If, so. if you're, if you're entertained, we're entertained. Oh, you're sweet. You're very sweet. Um, okay, I have another question. Okay. That I'm going to shuffle here a little bit. Oh, this one is for Dirk and Danielle. Do you have any animals? Uh, well, well, we've had animals. We, we're in between right now. Okay. Sadly, we said goodbye. Oh, well, I'm sorry because that. Oh means no, no, that's oh, okay. No, we we t we still talk about him. I wish I could grab a picture of. Um, I can tell you briefly really an interesting story about where we we more dog people, but only because only because Danielle is badly allergic, allergic to, to cats, cats. But I love them. Yeah. We've tried. We've tried. It's we've a thing. 
It's a big so, thing. It's tough. Yeah. So uh, we try. Here. Um, I don't know. Do we have a minute for a quick? Yeah, point? sure. Of course. Well, I just think it's kind of an interesting story, and it's kind of hard to believe, I'm but it's to true. Your, your um, visual. Here is uh, here is our last friend Chester. Oh, oh. Chester. Chester! He just looks like the dog that everyone wants to hang out with. Well, Chester. he was. He was the greatest. Yeah. He, he was, was like the life of the party, wasn't he? Yes, he was. He he had was. A great sense of humor. Yeah. In fact, when we first <laughs> we brought him home, and he was, we had friends over to celebrate Chester coming into our house, and we oh. were all having martinis, and he <laughs> leapt, he leapt he leapt. A, from over two laps of people sitting on a couch, he leapt over the top of them, nose first into a martini, and and then went like, blah, 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 blah. yeah. <laughs> said, we, got, we got the right dog. Party <laughs> <laughs> but I can. No, no. But How brief, cute. I'll try to make yeah. this brief, uh, but it's a pretty cool story. Um, our first dog that we adopted was Walter, and Walter was the sweetest dog ever. Um, at the pound where we got him. The only question we had, we couldn't figure out why, because he'd been there for like years. And we said, such a sweetheart. Yeah. Why would any why would he be here? And they said, Well, we we don't know. And so we spent some time with him. We said, Well, we're taking him home. He's gonna we, we gotta give him a home, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, the only thing about him is he had a really bushy tail, and in the middle of it there was a bald spot, and then there was bushy on the end. Okay. And I thought I'd never seen that before. So as I was checking out at the uh place, you know, you know, to take him yeah. home to adopt him. I said, you know, look, this is not going to affect it. We're, we're in love with this dog. So he, we're, he's going home with us. But I said, but is there something we need to have him see a vet for, you know, some, is there something mites or some problem? And they said, no, you know, this dog is such a good dog. He's such a sweet dog that in the years he's been in his little confine in his little cage, every time somebody walks by his tail goes crazy and he's just knocked the fur off of his tail. <laughs> So we take him home, and sure enough, weeks later, his tail is fully grown back. Oh. He's, the sweetest, he's the sweetest guy ever. Well, sadly, within a couple of years, he got rather sick, oh. and we yeah. tried everything. We took him to vets, to specialists. We we bent a Visa card in half trying to trying to because the yeah. vets would all say, "God, I you know." It, it might be something we can figure out, but we just don't know what the heck it is. It's a birth defect, yeah. or something. Long story short, um, we had to make the decision to say goodnight to him, yeah. and we took him to our vet, and um, we were both rather upset, and I think part of it was because it was a stainless steel table with fluorescent lights. Oh, and yeah. It's a very sterile environment. Right. And I just said, you know, and the vet was kind of concerned because he saw Danielle and I, and he was like, are you guys going to be okay? And I said, probably <laughs> not. I, yeah. said, uh, I said, part of it is because of where we are, and he said, well, we have a tree in the back, uh, you know, and some people like to go Aww. there. Said, well, of course, that's what we should do. So we held him as he said goodbye, and you know. Oh. So, so now, so now, like about a year or two later, we're mm. ready now to bring another dog home. We decided, you know, enough time had passed that Walter would want us to bring home yeah. one of yeah. his brothers or sisters from the kennel. Yeah, yeah. So we searched and we searched and we searched and we kept thinking, well, maybe we're not ready, we're not sure, and lo and behold. Here pops Chester. Chester. And Chester, we just had an immediate bond and we fell in love and everything was perfect. So mm -hmm. I'm now doing the same thing, signing out, you know, paying for the shots and what have you. Uh, I said, do you have any, uh, he was only about nine months old or something like that. He was just still a puppy. And I said, do you, do you have any history on this dog? I just wonder why would any, it's such a great dog. Why would anybody, they said, yeah, the, the animal control person wrote a report. So we'll give that to you. So I'm reading the report while they're finishing the paperwork and the animal, the person who picked him up, picked him up under the same tree where we say goodbye. To <gasps> I'll be done. Are you serious? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was found wandering. Aww. Yep. You were supposed to have him. Meant to be. Walter had everything to do with that. Right. That's what we say. We, we sent him to us. We said he. we were not being led by a hand. We were being led no. by a paw. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh my a, heart. A version of Walter, actually. Yeah. Walter was like oh, a my heart. 50 pound dog, and Chester was 30 pounds. And, but everyone goes, is that Chester? No, that's Walter. Is that Walter? No, that's Chester. So <laughs> pictures of them all over the house. Anyway. Yeah. Well, it's yeah. Animals are. Oh, I'm sorry, BG. Go ahead. 
I was just going to say that animals um, basically select us. Yes. This, this guy, Quigley, was this big. Uh, and I knew I wanted two cats. I thought I wanted a, a little boy and a little girl and raise them together. But um, the little girl got out of there with some other person. And uh, so I thought, oh, maybe I get a, maybe an older cat and a younger cat, which we they're four months apart. No big deal. But this one, I was looking for a kitty, kitten, and he was in a cage. And I stopped. They said, put your knuckles through there and let them sniff your hand, but don't put your fingers because they'll bite or claw sometimes. Mm -hmm. And so I put my knuckles through the chain link. And he jumped from the back all the way up to the front and came up to where he was right in my face. He was like this big. He was just oh, a yeah. little bit. He was, he was like a pound. Oh, and he basically said, I don't know if you know this or not, but I'm going home with you <laughs> today. You know, I mean, I, I couldn't get away from him. I kept walking around and he was still watching me, you know. It's, 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 and, it's, it's remarkable, isn't it? It's really it is. Yeah. They know. Sometimes they, know. they become such a part of our lives. And mm -hmm. then someday you're sitting there looking at me and go, oh, my God, this is an animal. But yeah. But he's but he's every bit as much of my family as you know. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's so easy to humanize them. BG absolutely. has two cats. I have two cats, and they all have their own personalities. So, oh yeah, you know, this we can so talk weird. about them without even identifying them by name and know exactly who we're talking about. <laughs> so it's fun, yeah. and they and they they fulfill a lot of voids that you know. Yeah. I don't have kids, and yeah. That's okay. <laughs> but I love having animals and I take care of community cats. I have my own cats and I volunteer at an animal shelter and walk dogs and that's fulfilling for me. So oh, that's so important too. So yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah. Well, you are. You're giving them the the love and the attention they need. Really, they need it just like we do. They need yeah, it. Exactly. Yeah. And since Chester yeah. nothing, we've adopted all of the and named all of the hummingbirds, birds, Aww. squirrel. Everything in the backyard <laughs> has a name. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. Regularly, mm -hmm. that so, is great. Oh, yeah. I love that. Just yeah. loving animals. I said, I think says so much about people. People who can dismiss an animal or mm. want to hurt an animal. But anyway, that's I guess neither here nor there. Yeah. Um, okay, this may not be the, the 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 best transition actually, but here's another question. <laughs> I actually kind of hate asking this one right now, but anyway, um, quarantine meal or cocktail. Oh. Have you, and this is for anyone, anything you've discovered, or th uh, anything you've enjoyed making or that you want to share from a, a food, like a dish or a cocktail for the happy hour with BG audience? <laughs> Well, I have we have two. Well, I have two favorite, and Dirk, we do a partnership on chili. Ooh, we, I love chili! A great vegetarian chili with yeah. caramelized onions, mm. and then I make a French French Canadian dish, which is oh. a, a, like a pea soup that was kind of handed down, and that's his fave. He likes that. He likes my pea soup, but it's going to get too hot for the pea soup soon, so. We'll drop that one. But but. The, but the great thing about both of those is that what we do is we make a big pot of it. Yeah. And then we freeze sections yes. a little at a time, right? Yeah. yeah. The always have the freezer is your friend. Yes. yes. You need you freezing. need nutrition and you need to be able to get it relatively easily without having yeah. to fuss and muss. Right. Yeah. And so yeah, that's kind of what that's our probably our main staples along, right. you know, with fruits and mm. vegetables and you know. Right. Yeah. We tried it. We're trying our best to be very healthy during this time. Now, do you oh, all sure. have a garden or anything? Do you grow anything at your house? We just started. We just as we yeah. do have a garden, but um, I'm starting with herbs. My mom is doing tomatoes at her place, so uh, we'll get that going. But okay. then we're going to move up to to lettuce because I've just been a little freaked out about buying lettuce and cleaning it. I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy, but anyway, I think you always should go with your gut. Whatever yeah. feels good. Yeah, yeah. I do yeah. too. And a lot of those things are easy to grow. Well, here I don't I don't know what the zone is and all of that. I'm I'm a relatively I grew up on a farm. 
I should, this should be natural to me and it's not at all. Monica, where, I, was where was the farm? Where, where are you from? I'm from Indiana. So oh, wow. yeah, I grew up in a farm family. My grandpa was a farmer. He's a dairy farmer. And, and then we moved to the headquarters. So I, I, and my dad was a farmer my, his whole life. And, um, and even when he wasn't farming large parcels of land, he had a garden that was bigger than most people's property. So, but um, that was very natural for him. It wasn't natural for me, except now I love it. And yeah. I'm trying, you know, I, I'm just trying anything I can. I'm not necessarily doing a good job, but I'm trying. So, yeah. Do you have raised yeah. kids or how are you doing? I'm sorry? Do you have raised kids or how are you yeah. doing? That's great. Yeah, I have a raised bed, a very large raised bed in my backyard. And um, it's kind of evolved over the past several years. And now it's mostly berry shrubs. Um, and that wasn't my plan, but it works and it's perennial and it's easy. But I grow tomatoes and peppers and Love it. herbs and things yeah. like that. So, Perfect. Fantastic. But, isn't it the best just to see things grow and yeah. to know that you raised them and you grew them? And I don't know. Yeah, I yeah. compost. I do all of it. I'm oh, like, good wow. for you. Yeah, we spent so many, really the last seven years, we've spent so much time in Los Angeles that we're kind of back yeah. and forth so much that we really didn't have a chance to. But yeah. we're, we're getting into we're it now. It now. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's cool. I love it. I mean, yeah. I don't have a lot to contribute to it, but I love it. So, okay. So, BG, do you have a quarantine menu or cocktail that you would like to um, share? Well, I have a soup that I like to share with people because it's only three ingredients. It's my one of my favorite recipes because it's cheap, it's freezable, everybody likes it, and you can make it in like one pan. Oh. And it's pasta fajol. And what you do is you take a cup of chopped celery, cover it with a little water, bring it to a boil and cook it for about 15 minutes till it's tender. Set it aside. In a big skillet, you put a, um, some garlic and some um, oil, just do the garlic clove and get rid of it. And then you put a regular size can of chopped tomatoes, good quality tomatoes in there, and then put oregano and all the things that you'd put in an Italian dish. And then you have a can of white kidney beans, cannellini beans, mm. put them in there. Get all that kind of gussied up and salt and pepper and everything that you'd want in it. And then you pour in the celery and you can put it like in a crock pot at that point and just let it get hot. And it's just divine. Oh. You, <laughs> you can, uh, it's a tomato vegetable soup and you can do like ditalini or some kind of small pasta, um, a small amount. So you can put some of that in the dish before you put the soup in. Mm. And uh, the soup freezes well. Everybody, like my 92 year old father ate it at Christmas one time and a four year old ate it too. So I figured <laughs> <laughs> it's a hit. And, um, and it's, I make it all the time in the winter, especially, and f just freeze it so you have a hunk of it to, you know, warm up. But um, it's just a really good old dependable recipe. Oh, uh, great. You know? Yeah. You're making my mouth water. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Love it. Um, yeah, I like to cook. Yeah. I do, too. We do, too. Yeah. We work together. He's a good cook. He's a really good cook. Um, Quigley likes to be the sous chef. Wow. Nice. Oh, good at chopping. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, is he ever? <laughs> He's very good at chopping. I didn't hear. <laughs> Are you still doing other things along with Brooklyn Nine Nine, or is that mostly what you do right now? That, that's been taken up about eight months of the year for me, and mm -hmm. you know, then I decompress at home for a month or so, and and then I do some writing. I and I, you know, I've done a, I did a movie of the week, and I, you know, I do. I'm open to doing things, but. I'm fortunate enough to, because of the show, be able to be kind of particular yeah. about what yeah. I want to do. So um, that's good. Yeah, travel and you know things like that. But you know, I'm I'm ready to jump back in as soon as as soon as this thing runs its course. 
Um, okay, so the last question I have for the two of you, three of you, I'm sorry, my apologies. Mm. Daniel, did you get your drink? I did, thank you. Okay. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. 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 I'm there drinking my water. May, there may or may not be a couple of BG wine glasses on their way to you. Uh oh. <laughs> Love well, it. We would drink them with verve. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Everything I love is better. Okay, here we go. Um, so the last question that I'm going to throw at you is, um, what is the one role or album you wished you had been offered? Danielle's an actor as well. I think she should. What role would you? I agree. I, I, before she answers, I should say that she did appear in the first episode of season five of Brooklyn Nine Nine. Tiny thing, but it, yes. was, it was fun. so fun. Yeah. She, I, um, she was my, she was Hitchcock's prison babe. Yeah, because <laughs> everybody woo, woo, needs a prison woo. babe, right? You do, you do. So yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead, I don't know. I don't know. We had a good time. We we we've worked together on stage before. <clears throat> so we we had a great time. That was just a lot of fun. But it was so cool. kind of flash. It was pretty quick. That's so cool. I don't know. Um, yeah, you know the thing. I, you know the thing is that uh, you're so grateful when you, when yeah. someone offers you something to do that, especially if it's something that is challenging and exciting and this and the other. But again, if it's not, if it's just a, if it's if it's not the greatest thing you've ever read then our job is to make it the greatest thing we've ever right. read. Begin yeah. excited about it, you know? Right. <laughs> oh, Quigley. I know. Sorry. Quigley, the That's handball. okay. Not a problem. We love it. He's hit the bar. He's He's been, he's the bartender. He's on the table. He's dancing on the tables now. It's, uh oh, it's that time of night. <laughs> so, <laughs> How about BG with uh, an album? Is there an yeah. album that you wish you had played on or? Oh gosh, a lot of them. Yeah, <laughs> uh, um, I did get a chance to play on a lot of really good stuff. Yes, you have. Um, but um, I never got to work with Frank Sinatra. That really is a big yeah. one for me. Or yeah. Tony Bennett. Oh um, yeah, sure. So either Tony, of those, I would have, uh, I would have liked to accompany sure. either or both of those people. Sure. And um, but. I've been very lucky. I got to work with Henry Mancini oh. and uh, uh, Perry Como and Dinah Shore and people like that. And so, yeah, I've I've had a good uh, good run. There, 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 there are a lot of jazz musicians out there who would say the same about you. Mm -hmm. Wish God, if one person I'd like to play with, it'd be Dee Dare. Oh, well, that's nice true. to hear. Well, it's true. I believe it. Yeah, amazing. No. I wish. Um, there's an album that I love of Keely Smith and oh, she did an album with picture. Billy May. <laughs> what is he doing? He's eating one of my pictures. <laughs> uh, he's, he's carrying it around. This doesn't so, surprise me at all. It's fine. So, so Keely Smith and what was yeah. it? Uh, the Billy May Orchestra, and yeah. it was my—it was kind of my introduction to all of this, and uh, not—I mean, to to him. But there's a drummer, and so many of the tunes, all I could listen to was a drummer, which I have to say is not really what I typically do. But this uh, Alvin Stoller is his name, and I have this huge musical crush on Alvin Stoller. But I wish that I could have been. Keely Smith on that album. That album was made before I was born, so that wasn't really even an option. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Keely Smith, I heard you guys talking about Robert um, Mitchum. Mitchum. Yeah. My dad was in one of his, my dad was an actor, and he was in one of his films called Thunder Road, and so was Keely Smith. Oh, yeah. We talked about She Thunder hasn't Road seen that. I've been telling her we need to rent oh, that. Oh, you got to watch it. Her dad. Because it's, um, it takes place in Knoxville. That's right. That's I right. saw it when I was in high school or college. It's, yeah. a, it's a fun film. Her dad is Jacques Aubuchon. And and just like the actor you were telling me about earlier, if you when you see him, you go, oh, God. He was on the Twilight Zone. He was yeah, in Robert Mitchum movies. He was in a bubble. <laughs> he plays the meanie. He always played the meanie guy. 
Oh, see, we've got it. Well, you got that's a good role to play. I would think that. Yeah. Um, I always think when I doing. I can't. Well, horror films are are hard for me to watch. I did see Poltergeist. Unfortunately, I watched it when I was oh, a yeah. little young. That scared and me to death. Yeah, <laughs> it out of me. But. <laughs> I've watched Poltergeist. Poltergeist. I saw it twice. But I was still scared. It may be why I can't watch scary movies anymore. But um, did you did you yeah. watch the, op the opening ten minutes of That's it? Because I, I I don't I was really little. I mean I don't I was too young. I shouldn't have watched it. That's the the whole Just point. Mean, if you watch <laughs> the opening, if you watch the opening of the film, you'll see me do some weird stuff. <laughs> but before, I want to watch before it. it gets scary, before it gets scary. Before right. it gets scary. Right. Oh, yeah. it's before, okay. I'll watch you in the beginning. Then. Might rent it again and see because it's been a long time since I saw it. Yeah. But um, yeah, my parents, you know, my mom loved horror films, and she watched Children of the Corn and all this. Yeah. And I, we lived in the middle of cornfield. <laughs> it was my worst nightmare come true. But and you know, Friday the Thirteenth and all that nonsense. But yeah. I'm I'm glad they exist put people to work, but scare right. them, you know, what out of me. Anyway, um, <laughs> what we about? I was, I was going to say something about, um, oh, I would think that playing like the bad guy or the mean guy, just the whole character. Well, you have they're, often, they're often the more, uh, you know, complex characters, right. you know, yeah. mm -hmm. what's, what, oh, what, yeah. happened to this, what happened to this poor son of a bitch? What, how did <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, really? <laughs> Such a mean bastard, or whatever. Yeah. Or, you know, <laughs> cold, cold, and you know, whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah, the more you know, but but everything, life is like an onion. You know, you keep peeling back the, uh, the right. layer. Yeah. Absolutely. Peeling all the layers. I love it. Well, listen, anytime in, in the somewhere down the road, there'll come a time when you guys are on the West Coast, and uh -huh. we have to hook up. And, yes, and, and, also, and if not, we'll come to Nashville. What the hell? We, that has to happen. It has there you to. go. We this was too, this was too easy. This was too much fun. We have to do this in person sometime when it's safe. When we don't have to wear a mask to do it, we should do it for exactly. sure. Exactly right. Um, okay, so Brooklyn Nine Nine, everybody watch. I'm uh, is your uh, is hiatus, hiatus extended or where are you guys with that? Yeah. Are you? Well, you know, yes. I mean, they yeah. have nothing's official yet, but we were supposed to go back to work in July, and uh, we haven't heard otherwise. But that's clearly yeah, not going to happen. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I have not, it's unofficial, but um, whether it's later this year or sometime next year, I, I don't know. We're waiting. We'll, we'll find out, I assume, within the next month or so. You know, everything depends on everything. Well, however yeah. you watch it, yeah. keep watching, and it's a wonderful show, and we're so glad to to know you and to watch the show. It just makes it that much more fulfilling for us, so that's yeah. cool. And same back at you. Yeah. We're so Thank glad you. to know you guys. And the book, when uh, Master and the Little Monk comes out, you have yeah. to, and the animated short, we all have to, the fable, excuse me, when it when it uh, comes out for all of us to support you and to purchase, then we all oh, need yeah. to do it. That's fun. And, That's great. Um, and Dirk, you had mentioned that one of your favorite songs that the two of you oh. um, love to hear was Autumn in New York. So, oh. so we're gonna take this out, BG recorded oh. a solo, recording of that for you guys today oh, so oh, thank you thank you so, so it's i right always play that when i come to new york oh, if it's in the fall so, oh, so it's, it's one of my favorites too oh, and i love you. your version your version is probably you and oscar peterson your versions are my favorite oh, like, thank you know, listen over, that's high cotton over, to be in over. for me it really yeah. is oh, well yeah we, i'm a big fan of oscar do this again Will you two do it again if we invite you back? Which we're oh, going to. It would be an oh, honor. Yes. An honor. Right. If you want to hear stories about BG, you talked a little bit about what it was like <laughs> a woman coming up back in the day in the yeah. music business. Yeah. Well, write down all your questions. This um, is we are we are we're never going to change the format of this. If I have to change the format and make this more formal, we're not doing it. So you just write down your questions and ask. Me. That's that's how we're going to do this. So, uh, yes. Be safe. Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, thank you. We, we appreciate you guys so much, and congratulations on everything. And just stay safe. Wear your mask. Stay home. All that good yeah. stuff. You definitely And everybody, will. everybody watching, just um, just know that we care very much about you and um. We just want you to to be safe and be safe and well. 
and we want to get back to work. So um, a, a portion of all the proceeds from MonicaRamey.com and BGAdare.com will, for, for the rest of the year at least, will benefit live music venues because in short, no venue, uh, no BG concert. So we yeah. need all those venues to stay open so we can get back on the road and they need your support right now. So visit yeah. SaveOurStages.com support the venues you love locally and keep them in business. And thank you all so much. We thank appreciate you it. so much. Thank you. Take care. You too.